Alrighty. Uh, we have a lore video, I suppose. Curse of Cain. Curse of Cain. This book is a shit and pickle sandwich that is masterfully executed and I don't know why they made it. Now why do I say masterfully executed? A shit and pickle sandwich is bad. No matter how well you toast the buns, no matter how carefully you layer the pickles, no matter how nicely you stir the shit before slathering it on there, it is still a shit and pickle sandwich. This book tried so hard to well technically their way out of terrible writing. Everything is accounted for. Every plot hole is filled. Nothing is technically incorrect. All of it is asinine garbage. <laughs> all of it is terrible. Now again, you can well technically your way through all the decisions. There's not a lot of people that defend the end times, but just saying like, the writers, if I had them in the room and I was going through this lore video with them, they'd be like, yeah, but we mentioned on page 100 that Teclas took his dick out and put it on the table. And I'm like, but why would he do that? Like, sure, you can say he did, but it's a stupid idea. Ugh. All right, let's do it. The previous book I read, The Fall of Altdorf, was at least fun. It was a fun read. I had a good time uh, until like the last, the last, I don't know, 10% of the book, last 15% kind of ruined the rest of the book, but it was fun up until then. The Curse of Cain just started out awful and never got better. Uh, the only thing I will say before I actually start getting into this is I read the sundering i read the malice dark blade omnibus i read the elves omnibus which is just some random other stories about the elves um i read the war of the beard so i've read that i've kind of followed malekith through his timeline because i'm hoping to do a video on malekith in general but that's why we're here i have not read the Tyrion to teclas omnibus so my opinion is coming into this without those as background context. But again, I don't think it's as big of a deal because I don't think that the events in this book hold up within this book. It's not even like, a, well, Tyrion in a different book wouldn't have done that. It's just even in this book, it doesn't make sense. So anyway, let's let's get into enough stalling. Curse of Cain. All right. So this is happening around the same time that Nagash is unleashed. Uh, so before the fall of Altdorf. Because Nagash gets unleashed before the, uh, the right before the fall. Um, maybe a couple years. So, yeah. Curse Kane is what's going on with the elves at this time. Book starts out. Malekith's chilling in Nagarond. And, uh... Okay, anyway, he, he, Valkia and a bunch of corn armies are invading Nagarond, and for some reason Marathi in the Citadel of Brond didn't warn anybody because it's their job is to, like, warn of the demon invasions coming. So a lot of the Dark Elf cities are falling. The Dark Elves can't stop them, and everything is doomed. And then Malekith's like, hmm, I should do something about that. We'll gather the armies and it's it's like okay so he's finally gathering the armies he's flayed several of his top generals for losing their cities instead of like helping them or raising forces and then he raises this massive giga gigantic army and starts marching north to go mess up marathi like that's the point is he's still going to mess up marathi he's not even going to stop the demons he incidentally runs into some demons 
and he's, you know, happy to fight them, but, like, he's not doing it to, like, save Nagarov. So he goes north, and he, like, I don't know. This is the start of it, and I am a Total War fan, but I love Scarbrand in the game. I think he's really cool. So when I saw Scarbrand was fighting Malekith, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. And Malekith just kind of sits above the fight in a melancholy, thinking about his past. He's just like, ooh, it was so cool in the past. Oh, what? My forces are losing? Okay. And he dive bombs Scarbrand and literally one taps him. Like, literally hits him one time. Scarbrand's dead. He just. He just he, 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 why? Why would you do that? Why would you give us a cameo of a cool character we like and then just make him look like a little bitch boy? That was pointless. Like, it wasn't even a cool fight. It was just Malekith descended, Scarbrand went, Rawr! and then pfft, dead. One swing of his destroyer sword okay whatever so he ends up finding marathi and she has like this crazy shadow wall that no one can get through but then drusilla comes through and she's like i'm totally not marathi and everyone who sees her is like that's marathi and malchus like hello not marathi uh thank you for letting me into your citadel and he goes in citadel and then he waits for Marathi, and then Marathi shows up, and he's like, why didn't you tell me the chaos was coming? And she's like, because, because chaos is coming, and it's uh, demons, and I'm scared. And she's, uh, and Malkit's like, oh, okay. So why didn't you tell us demons? That didn't answer, that didn't answer my question. You started complaining about other stuff, and she's like, you're weak and stupid. Oh, okay. So... Malekith starts to leave, and she gives him a bit of her army, and Drusilla's leading it, which means Marathi's leading it. But essentially, Marathi wanted the Dark Elves to get murdered by Korn, so they would abandon Nagaroth, kind of. But I don't really know what she wants, because, like... Then she also gets really mad that he's going to go retake Ulthwan, because he'd rather fight for Ulthwan. She's like, no, then you're a piece of shit, so... I, I don't know. And again, I know I'm not explaining it super well, but it's because I actually can't figure out what Marathi actually wanted according to the text. According to the text, she like verbally says that they should defend Nagaroth and not abandon their their thing, like their little frozen wasteland because it's their home and they shouldn't let people take it. But then her actions directly jeopardized it and pushed Malekith to jump to Ulthwan. So it's like, what are we doing? And maybe that was her super secret plan because of the uh, the rest of the book. Maybe she wanted him to go to Ulthwan, but then, like, what was the point of lying? Why wouldn't you just say, because we should go to Ulthwan? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Her plan didn't make any sense to me, but maybe it did to somebody else. I don't know. If you want to defend the end time? Sure, go for it. So Malekith gathers up everybody, and they're going to leave Nagarod, and they're going to go invade Ulthwan. So, a couple things you need to understand. Uh, one, Ulthwan is without a Phoenix King right now because Malekith murdered him. And that scene is later in the book, but it's really dumb and it's during a flashback, so we're going to cover it now because it's important to why he's invading Ulthwan. So he went to Finnebar, the seafarer, in his private chambers as an apparition, as like a ghost. And Finnebar is talking to him and he's like, you're a piece of shit, Malekith. And then Finnebar admits that all of the Phoenix Kings after Anarian were fake. And that Malekith was supposed to be the Phoenix King. And he admitted it that they need these mages' charms to survive the fire of Assyrian. Assyrian is the biggest, baddest elven god. The god of judgment. Um, and without those charms, they all would have died. So Assyrian's chosen hasn't been the Phoenix King for a very long time. It was supposed to be Malekith. This is the kind of part of the, well, technically, of the shit sandwich. But we'll get into it more later. But, like, well, technically, the book said it was supposed to be Malekith, so it was supposed to be Malekith. Okay. I guess it's supposed to be Malekith. Now, his mom and him both exploited the pleasure cults, the cults that worship, like, the elf version of the devil... So that's not great. I don't know why Assyrian would choose Malekith for that. I don't know why 
Asurian would choose Malekith when he caused so much civil war and murdered so many elves in cold blood. I don't know why Asurian would th think that deserves to be the Phoenix King. And, like, the implied thing they keep talking about is that, like, Malekith, it was Asurian's chosen, and he's the best thing for the elves, and he's the only thing that can stop the demons. But Malekith is part of the faction that worships the demons, and you're talking about, like, God. So it's not like God doesn't know. It's not like a Syrian doesn't know that Malik is fucking around with all these demons and that his mother's a Slaneshi worshiper. And oh yeah, the next thing I was going to mention after this Finnabar moment is he pushed Nakari. He like summoned Nakari. It's not clear in this book, so I don't know if it's somewhere else, but he said like, you used your power to send your plaything Nakari to weaken the elves. So it's like, Assyrian chose this guy, the only guy that could lead the elves to victory against the demons in the long run, who is actively attacking elves with demons. Like, again, you could be like, well, technically, he's the best candidate, and because they're rejecting him, he's lashing out. But, like, the act of lashing out doesn't mean he's not still the best choice. Bro, it kind of fucking does, because he's clearly very corruptible and very easy to manipulate. And, like, because Marathi's been doing it for 6,000 years. Like, Assyrian's judgment is like, yeah, no, it's, it's this guy. And the thing is, it's still this guy. It's not like Assyrian's stuck. Well, I decided, so it is what it is. Just, like, pick a new guy. Pick Emmerich. Pick Tyrion. Like, it's it's fine. You could do that. It's not like he's like, no, he's still good. So whatever. Uh, but Malekith's, here's that confession, which I don't really know why Finnabar gave. That seemed pointless. But... Uh, okay, well, he told Teclas, but whatever. So, Finnabar's like, well, that's my dark secret, but also, I'm in a magic circle, so you can't touch me. And then he starts going for the door, and the door's not locked. Malekith isn't real. He's an apparition, so he has no power over the door. There's nothing wrong with the door. And Malekith says to him, in a deep, scary voice, he's like, well... The dangerous thing about windows is they can be opened. And Finnabar hears this, and there's a fountain in the center of his room. And it starts churning. And it starts turning a weird color. And then Finnabar says, What? What are you doing? Now, if I was Finnabar, and a spooky ghost of my race's mortal enemy showed up and said something about windows can be opened and then your your pool starts churning and all this shit i leave i just open the door and leave i just go away why why wouldn't you go get your fucking guards why wouldn't you go do anything what just leave but he doesn't leave he walks over to the pool over to the giant churning pool and he goes what did you do and like leans over it and looks down into it and a blood letter of corn comes out not not a blood thirster the small one but like a blood letter of corn comes out and like grabs his throat and like starts tearing at his his flesh and ends up killing Finnevar. but it that that didn't have to happen like what the fuck this this plan was garbage. Your plan was to just summon a single blood letter into Finnabar's chambers and it would kill him when he's conscious and sees it coming? Like, if he wasn't a fucking idiot, he could have left. Or honestly, if he wasn't a fucking idiot, he just could have killed the blood letter. This is the Phoenix King. Like, yeah, he's Finnabar the Wayfarer or whatever, but he's not a little bitch. Like, he's actually decent at fighting. Like, he can kill one blood letter. Come on. <laughs> it was so stupid. So Finnabar's dead. And that's kind of like... In general, Malekith's plans are garbage. So, like, that's it's it's all a thing. And I know I keep saying I'll get to it later, but just like remember this nugget. So, Assyrian chose, uh, according to this book, Assyrian chose Malekith because he's the best leader of the elves, and it's apparently not because he's a good person because he consorts with demons all the time. So, it must be because he's a master strategist. Well, as we discussed in the Malice Darkblade omnibuses, but I won't do that rant again here. Mal Malekith's plans are really stupid. And, like, they kind of work out, but it's nothing to his success. And then he goes, like, yeah, it was me. So what is this? Again, Assyrian is, like, 
God. So why can't he see that Malekith is being a fucking dunce and it's only because things fall in his favor that he wins? Like this, this exact example. Well, my plan is to show up as a ghost and then open a portal and let a bloodletter it and kill him. Okay, is he asleep? No, I'll talk to him beforehand and make sure he's very awake and aware that danger is present. Okay, well, he at least doesn't know the portal's coming, so you're distracting him while the portal opens. No, I'll point at the portal. Okay, did you lock the door? No, I can't do that. It's magically protected. So how does this plan kill him? Well, you see, when he walks over to look in the giant portal that I just ominously warned him was dangerous, then he'll just die. Oh, cool plan, Malekith. You're a real smart guy. You're the only person that could lead the elves. Yeah, yeah. Real smart guy. Okay, so Malekith's stupid. Assyrian's stupid. But yeah, technically, Assyrian chose Malekith, I guess, so technically it's all correct. So, Finnebar's dead. All the ones without a Phoenix King. And then, as I mentioned, apparently Malekith had some way of influencing Nakari. And it's, it's said that Malekith influenced Nakari, not just Marathi. So it's not even like you can pin this on, like, well, Marathi's corrected by, corrupted by the cults of Slaanesh, so Malekith's actually still a pure boy. No, like, he consorts with demons, apparently, all the time. So, I don't know. He just... He sends Nakari to weaken Ulthwan, murdering a bunch of High Elves and weakening their standing further. As the end times are coming. And Malekith keeps like going back and forth on whether or not he believes the end times are coming. And this is more believable. This isn't a complaint. Because um, it's just kind of like he keeps flipping like, oh, maybe it is the end times. Nah, never mind. It's just a cycle. Oh, well, maybe it's the end times. Oh, no, it's just a cycle. So Malekith forces all of his people onto boats. They sail out of Nagaron and they're going to go invade Lothurn. Uh, quick side note. This was part of the Malice Darkblade books, but essentially Malice lands. Malekith doesn't trust him, so he throws Malice at Eagle Gate, which is the most intense fortress on the western side of the Isle. And he lets Malice kind of deplete his forces so that he's not as much of a political threat. So Malekith is actively letting more of his army die than he needs to because he wants to take out political threats. And also whenever elves come to him with like, problems he still executes like half of them just for bothering them so he meets up with imric and teclas imric and teclas are complacent in malekith's plan which also kind of sucks that imric is now getting dragged into the mud muck for this and teclas is completely destroyed by this book and again everything is technically correct but it's just stupid so teclas is haunted by the spirit of lilaith and, and the one of the elven gods and she's like Teclas my son all the elven gods will return and this is the only way to save Ulthwa go help Malekith okay Lilith so that's fine so Teclas wants Malekith to become Assyrian's chosen he doesn't want to say that or whatever but it's what happens so, okay, so Teclas and Imric are, are secretly helping Malekith get all this stuff together. Teclas revealed to Malekith that he was supposed to be the original Phoenix King, so we went to Finnebar with that information already, and then Finnebar confessed it. Teclas convinces Imric and his dragons to get on Malekith's side, because it's the only way to stop the demons that are coming, I guess, is to murder all of the fucking High Elves so that your army is supremely weakened. Like, that's the fucked up part, is his intention is to come and conquer Ulthwan with the help of Teclas and Imric. It's not to broker peace and like say hey these thousands of years of war have weakened us and now the demons are coming you need to accept that like malekith was the original chosen we need to combine our armies and make a stand no they're going to obliterate the shit out of each other and somehow they'll be ready to fight the demons then and malekith's like it'll purge the weakness of dude the weakness or what like tens of thousands of spearmen are pretty good against demons they're not so good when you murdered them all <sighs> okay whatever whatever so uh what to even say about this so malice dies at eagle gate kind of and then marathi saves him but malekith says something kind of dumb and it's just a side thing but it's kind of dumb so if you remember the malice dark blade books malice went, was taken to malekith's throne room Malekith was sitting on a throne and Marathi was next to him. And he goes, Malice, 
what's what's the deal and Malice is like I'm special I'm a special boy and Malchus is like good enough for me and then Marathi walks out from behind the throne and is like he has a Slaneshi demon in him named Tzakan Malchus like oh fuck okay that's surprising and now fast forward and he's like hmm Malice has some kind of demon in him but Malchus doesn't really know what that's about and I'm like yes you do you explicitly do know what that's about like, it's kind of played for, like, an Easter egg for the audience. Like, oh, you know, but Malekith doesn't know. But Malekith definitely knows! <laughs> Malice was on trial in his courtroom for having a demon in him. You can't later be like, oh, he has a demon in him? Well, fuck, son. That's crazy. That's not crazy. You know this. What's that? You have a D DUI? Yeah, I have a DUI. You're the one who arrested me for having for for drunk driving. You you are the person that would know I have a DUI. You convicted me. Oh god, whatever. So Malice's army is squandered in a pointless battle. Uh, Malkith then comes in to help as soon as Malice is too weak to be really a, a political threat to him. And then they go north. And they're trying to root out the allies of Tyrion, who is kind of defending the High Elves from Imric's little rebellion. And they go up north to Crace, or Trace. I'm going to go with Crace because that's how he's called it, but um, the, the place where the White Lions are from. And Malkith's doing terribly. He's marching this giant army into a wooded area, and they're just getting ambushed and picked apart. And then the, uh, the, the Everqueen's court of Aberlorn join forces against him, so there's forest magic and stuff and they're all massacring his troops so Malekith's like again to go back to Asurine chose this guy because he's the best leader of the elves he is constantly throwing men away out of spite or out of ignorance like he's just not paying attention to people warning him not to do things and he just walks into traps over and over again and then he gets mad at people who died so he goes by my will bails the battle out with his power which like yeah he is individually powerful and then he'll execute anybody who was listening to his orders but then got caught because he ordered them to go get caught so it's just like oh god i don't know and he keeps executing people and he's just like terrible he's just a terrible guy oh <sighs> I just so I'm so tired. I don't want to, I don't want to keep talking about this. Okay, it is revealed that Marathi is boning Tyrion and wants him to be a Narian reborn. And apparent that one I I profess I don't know much about because it was kind of alluded to that this happened in the past and Teclas barely got Tyrion away from Marathi's clutches and now she's back, so I guess that's happening. But Teclis is like, bro, we got to go north and we got to get to the Shrine of Cain so we can keep the Widowmaker, the Sword of Cain, away from Tyrion because if he gets it, he'll be unstoppable. Malkith's like, all right, bet. So Malekith is in Crace, which I don't know if you know where Crace is, but it's literally the most northern province. It's right next to where the Widowmaker is. Tyrion's in Aetain. He's, he's in Lothar. Now, he might have been working his way up this whole time. I don't know. But Malekith moves a portion of his army over to the Sword of Cain to try and protect it, and he gets there, and there's, like, a joint force. Oh, yeah, Aletha Nar is also ambushing him, and he just keeps letting that happening. But anyway, um, there's a force of, like, Aletha Nar's troops, but also Shrine Guardians, but also Tyrion's army trying to hold the Shrine of Cain, and Tyrion's not quite there yet, but he's getting real close. So Malachus trying to break it apart. He gets in a bit of a magical duel with some, some mages. He's slaughtering fools. His dragon Seraphon's tearing through the enemy army. And then Tyrion shows up, and he's riding like mad towards the Sword of Cain because he wants to claim it. He hates Tackless now. All this stuff. He gets into a duel with Malekith, and Marathi helps him a, helps Tyrion a bit in the duel. Malekith is defeated, and he's on his... Uh, he's, he's, he's down and out, and Alethanar shows up to fuck him up, and Alethanar fires the shot that's going to kill Malekith, and one of Malekith's own assassins also betrayed him and stabbed him, so he's full of poison, because that guy worshipped Marathi or whatever. doesn't matter. Like, Tyrion, an assassin, and Alethanar are all trying to kill Malekith, and Malekith's down and out. He's like, it's over for me. Uh, cringe. And then Tekla shows up and just shadows magics him to safety, and he's he's fine. Oh, yeah, and the Phoenix Guard showed up? And the Phoenix Guard are here to protect Malekith because Teclis revealed to them the secret 
of that Malak... So Teclos went to the Phoenix Guard, apparently, and told them that Malakith was meant to be the Phoenix King, and the, and the, the Phoenix Guard were like, yeah, bet. And... Uh, just... Uh. So the Phoenix Guard, in general, are warriors that take a vow of silence. Like, they cannot talk because they are shown how they die. And they're just like, they're meant to take that knowledge to their graves so they know what's going to happen before it happens, right? So Caradrian, the leader of the Phoenix Guard, starts talking. And Malachus like, I thought you guys didn't talk. And Caradrian's like, yeah, I broke that rule. Like, he's just kind of like, yeah, I broke, I broke that rule, it's fine. And Malachus like, I thought you could see your death or whatever. And Caradrian goes, well, death isn't always so certain. And I'm like, but it... It literally is. For you and your order, you know how you die. Down to, like, the second. You know the blow that kills you. Like, you know how... Th that's your whole thing. And now in this book, they're like, yeah, I mean, maybe it's not so certain. I was supposed to die back there, but I didn't. So I'm free from my bonds now. And I'm like, no, th no, you're... That's the only thing that makes you guys cool. Fuck. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever. So... Teclis and Caradrian escort the wounded Malekith out uh, down towards the, the shrine of Assyrian, the Phoenix King. Malekith asks why he burned to a crisp in Assyrian's judgment last time, and Teclis is like, oh, you just didn't stay in long enough. Like, you just need to stay in a little bit longer. And Teclis was like, because Assyrian, you, you were too weak. Assyrian needed you to go through these 6,000 years of trials to be stronger to properly lead the elves to salvation, which, no, 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 no. So the, no. So the god, of, the god of judgment of the elves, to get them better ready to fight the demons, he split their population in half, had them fight each other constantly, had half of the population, like, start to fiddle with chaos and, like, corrupt their blood and worship Slanesh, like, not not all the Dark Elves worship Slanesh, but, like, a good number of them do. So you turned more of your followers into chaos cultists. You turned a lot of them into just objectively bad people. You've weakened both of the races because the Sundering was the reason that the, hel the elves didn't take over the entire world and become the leading force that could have led the forces of order against chaos for all eternity. The Sundering happened and they perpetually weakened each other. Like, Assyrian did that so that Malekith be could become the perfectest, strongestest boy to lead a supremely weakened High Elves against the demons. That was the plan. And also, that, and this is where I'm going to finally bring this up. And so that was his plan all along. And, and, Malekith was chosen to be the next Phoenix King. An Arian's son, not an Arian's original son, who then had Tyrion. So Tyrion is a direct de descendant of an Arian. And an Arian touched the sword of Cain and, like, was corrupted by Cain and then had Malekith. So Malekith is, like, corrupted by Cain and the whole bloodline is or whatever. But, like... So Assyrian wanted him, not Tyrion. And this is going to get... We're going to jump forward a bit, but, like, I just need to talk about this now. So Tyrion takes the sword of Cain and becomes the avatar of Cain. Because, remember, Lilaeth told Teclis that all the gods are going to come back and fight it out as they always do. But then when Assyrian wins, as he always does, through Malekith, Assyrian himself will be leading their people against the demons. And this is where the shit sandwich comes back up. Technically, they've covered all their bases. But, like... Just take a fucking look at them. Tyrion is described as the spitting image of Anarion. He's wearing Anarion's armor. He wields Sunfang, which is a sword of, like, flaming light, the flame of Assyrian. Malekith is the avatar of Cain. He took several Cainate rituals to consolidate political power in Nagarond in previous books. He is the avatar of Cain. Like, all the Cainate cultists acknowledge him as Cain in the flesh. He is constantly murdering people. Cain is the god of murder. Like, his people have been worshipping Cain forever. There's an entire city dedicated to Cain for the Dark Elves. Tyrion's always been doing the best he can for the High Elves and being, like, a, a symbol of purity. All this stuff. So it's like, what's with this all of a sudden flip where, like, oh, man, Tyrion is the avatar of Cain and Malekith was the good one. What? 
literally how like this is the most cane touched person you've ever seen besides crone hellebron like literally herself Kane has touched no one further, and you're just like, nah, Malekith's the Surian's boy, and Tyrion is is pure Kane. He's he's the avatar of Kane. But why? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just have Tyrion be the Phoenix King guy and Malekith be the avatar of Kane and just flip the story? Like, why are we picking Malekith? It makes no sense. It's just garbage. Oh god, it's 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 pure asinine awfulness. So Malekith goes into the fire again. This time the fire accepts him. And he comes out and he's not changed as much as he'd want. And he's like, oh, okay. I feel like a fraud. So then Teclis throws a glamour on him. So to most most other elves, he looks like Malekith from before he got burnt. But it's a glamour. He is still factually a metal man. If you touch him, he is metal. But like, what? Again? the fuck are we doing at like story writing wise oh this is the real chosen but we need to pretend he's someone else and we need to like cover this up but everyone else is fake not malekith who lied apparently about being the avatar of kane who murdered all those people as like a joke who sicked demons on the elves because it's what he had to do to make elves stronger Th that's the real guy that's the awesome big boy but also we need to slap a new coat of paint on him and lie to all the elves because he doesn't look like a good boy but a surian knows he is like at that point you're doing so many flips to get through these hoops to get your story across the way you want it like just do a different story it's a shit story god so mal get the techless slip out they go down to calador in secret nobody knows he's still alive so Tyrion thinks he's one i guess but like Tyrion knows imric supported malekith he saw a mega fuck ton of dragons supporting malekith but then they're like uh well we'll hide in calador and as long as malekith doesn't reveal himself Tyrion won't come a knocking Okay, so there's a war going on now that Malekith is trying to organize from secret, while Imric, and uh, Imric is their general on the front line. So he's leading the forces of Kalidor and the Dark Elves brought over by Malekith versus all the rest of the High Elves at this point. How would Tyrion not just immediately assault Kalidor? Like. I he doesn't need to know Malekith's there to just go beat Imric's ass. He has the Widowmaker. He has the Sword of Cain. He can't be stopped. What? I don't know. So they find this guy from like 6,000 years ago, which Malekith is supposed to be special, by the way, for having lived that long. But now, like, in this story, it's just like, oh, Marathi lives that long because of pleasure cults. They got, um... I think it's Hotek, but it's this smith that helped Malekith in the Sundering. For the, for the Shrine of Vol, he made a bunch of magical weapons for Malekith in the Sundering. So this guy also survived for 6,000 years, and they literally say in the book, they're like, I thought you were dead. And he goes, eh, I was hiding. Yeah, hiding's, it's not, the question wasn't, I thought you were out in plain sight. Oh, no, you weren't? You were hiding? Oh, sick, bro. It was, how are you fucking alive? Oh, I was hiding. Cool. Starvation, water, age. <laughs> how, how'd you get through all those? Marathi has to kill an awful lot of people to get through those. Malekith is bound to a suit of armor, so the armor's still alive. He really isn't, but okay. Sure. You can just be alive, and it's like, I'm going to make something that can beat the Sword of Cain. Yeah, you just do that. Whatever. I don't care. It's fine. Just do that. So Malekith's getting a sword made that can beat the sword of Cain. He constantly says Teclis and Imric are soon to outliving their usefulness and he can kill them. And again, Assyrian chose him because he's the best boy who can lead the high elves, who can lead all the elves against chaos. And he's just casually plotting to murder the strongest mage, the champion of Lilaeth. Because this whole plan is all the gods come back, but the champion of Laeth, Malekith, is casually planning to murder. That's f it's fine. You picked the right fucking guy. Whatever. It's Everything's garbage. 
So Imric kind of guerrilla wars with Tyrion for a bit, just trying to keep him busy while Malekith heals and waits for his sword to be made. Not a lot happens. A couple of years go by. And the wind of Nag uh, Nagash gets reborn, so the wind of Shaiish gets taken. And, and Malekith's like, that's not great. We don't love that. That's real bad. So Teclos comes to Malekith with a plan. He's like, listen, the war's going poorly. More and more High Elves are joining Tyrion instead of you because, shocker, you keep fucking murdering people and you keep your, your goddamn Malekith. You've done everything evil all the time. So when you, they announce you're the Phoenix King, a lot of people don't want to join you. They'll join Tyrion. So, like, the madness of Cain is apparently taking over the island is what's being said. And they're only joining Tyrion. Not because he's a smarter option. He's been defending them for hundreds of years. It's because Cain took them over. And Malekith's armies are dwindling. Tyrion tries... To... Okay, so this is bad. I don't know a ton about Tyrion. I don't. But he seems like a generally nice guy. And since he took the sword of Cain... Like, I, I'm uncomfortable saying this out loud. It's a trigger warning. There's sexual assault that's going to happen. But, like, he loves Alariel, so he wants to go get Alariel so she can rule by his side. And she says no, because Cain's claimed you, so I don't really want to do that. So he goes to rape her? And I'm like, who the, whoever wrote this? Let's just look. Who wrote this? Ga Gav Thorpe. So Gav Thorpe apparently really likes Malekith and hates Tyrion. So he wrote this character assassination for Tyrion. He was like, not only is Tyrion wrong and a big stupid butthead and got taken over by Cain like a little baby, but also he's a rapist. And it's like, Jesus, dude. Like, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to write that at all. You could just say he's going to Avalor and to, claim, like, to, to get himself his queen or whatever, but like, you didn't have to say, like, he wants her affections by force. Like, that's, that's, that's medieval times E for rape, and I don't like that. I don't like reading that, so thanks for that, dick. Anyway, but she calls over the Wood Elves, I guess. The Wood Elves go through the world roots, and, like, all of the Wood Elves come to aid Alariel against... Tyrion's portion of the High Elves and Tyrion kills Orion Orion managed to like damage him but not enough so Orion's dead I don't know where Ariel is she's supposedly there but it's not mentioned that she died but then she's not there for the rest of the story so Alariel flees south with all these druids and dryads and wood elves and she reaches Malekith's army and she's like hey Malekith protect me and Malekith goes sure so Malekith finally gets his new sword. The the Vol the, the Vol priest Hotek dies after create, creating Malekith's sword. So the story conveniently brings him back to life and kills him as soon as the sword's done. Whatever, nothing matters. Malekith considers killing Teclas some more. Fine, just do that. And Emric finally fights Tyrion and loses and gets his ass handed to him. And a bunch of dragons are cut apart by the Widowmaker. And Malekith's like, now is my time to reveal myself. So he takes out his, his joint army of Wood Elves, High Elves, and Dark Elves. And he loses a bunch. The war's even for a bit, but then he starts losing. And everywhere he goes, he's losing. But remember, Assyrian chose him. Assyrian chose this guy, who's the only one fit to lead the High Elves. Checks notes, losing to the guy that wasn't fit to lead the High Elves. Great. Great. So Assyrian chose Malekith because he's the best guy and all of his plans work. Meanwhile, he's losing the war and it comes down to a final battle where everything's falling apart. Uh, he's having a bad time. Did I skip anything I wanted to talk about? I don't know. I'm not rereading re that whole book to figure out anything I want to talk about. Fuck it, this video's long enough. So Malekith has one last shot and it's because Teclis came up to him and said, hey, if we undo the vortex and sink Ulthwan... You'll be the Phoenix King. And Malekith's like, no. And then Alariel's like, it's the only way. Malekith's like, fine. So they're going to undo the vortex and let the winds of magic hop into everybody. And then that'll make them powerful. But the magic is the only thing holding Ulthwan above the seafloor. So it's going to sink like Atlantis. So Tyrion will be king of nothing. And Malekith and Teclis and them will all be super mages I, I guess I don't know dude I don't know so Malekith rallies the last of his forces he's heavily outnumbered by Tyrion 
but it's implied when Tyrion shows up, all of a sudden Tyrion is outnumbered three to one, and Malkith finds that odd, and I'm inferring that that means Tyrion just like murdered most of his army because Cain reasons. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. They just didn't want him to have a big army at this point. So Malekith tries to hold back Tyrion, but then it's all a trap because... Now, consider, Nagash has risen and stole the Wind of Death. So Nagash is raising undead everywhere and stuff. But also, the Wind of Death doesn't exist right now, which is the perversion the Wind of... The vampires raise people from the death because of the Wind of Death. Like, the Wind of Death is concentrated in Nagash right now, right? So Tyrion's charging... The Isle of uh, the Isle of Flame, where the 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 vortex is happening, and Teclis tells Malkith, "You got to keep Tyrion away from here." So Malkith goes out, and all of a sudden, a bunch of elven corpses start rising up out of the waters to ambush Malkith's forces and drag drag them down. But they're controlled by Tyrion, not Nagash. They aren't fighting Tyrion's forces. They are controlled by Tyrion himself. Since when is he a fucking necromancer? Since when is that a power of the Sword of Cain? What the fuck is happening here? This is some stupid shit. And then on the next page, it's revealed why all this stupid shit's happening because all the fe the fake Phoenix Kings rise up to help Tyrion and their undead forms, including Finnebar and like Belshinar and the other Imrics and all these things are, are rising up to fight Malekith. All the Phoenix Kings. So Malekith now has to fight Tyrion and all the phoenix kings of old in their undead forms and i'm like what but malkith goes i could do you one better and raises his sword and collects some winds of magic for a fuck all reason and summons the spirits of every elven hero that's ever been so eltharion the grim who recently died fighting nagash is back baby and he's fighting for malkith the ghosts of all the phoenix kings past so like the bodies of the phoenix kings are on Tyrion's sides but their souls are on malekith's sides and he uses them as spirit bombs to blow up the army and you think i'm exaggerating but this is all fucking nonsense this is utter garbage and Tyrion's throwing not Tyrion. malek is throwing the souls of phoenix kings at the enemy army and they're exploding and teclis goes up to him he's like dude what the fuck like you just killed three of my mages standing at the lodestones with whatever that was and malek's like not my problem you deal with it or i'll kill the rest too and i'm like Assyrian chose him and I'm not going to let that shit go. But, K, okay, so Necro-Tyrion versus God-Spirit-Mage Malekith, the duel finally takes place, and Tyrion bodies this shit out of, Mal out of Malekith, and it's, 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 well, oh, actually, yeah, his horse, Meherendir, is running over all these elves, and he's about to go get Teclis, because he wants to stop him from breaking the, the vortex. Sorry, I skipped ahead from... I, I, my bad. So going back a second, like, he's charging Teclis, and Malekith needs to go stop him. But Tyrion's horse has been with him through everything up to this point, and now he's like, nah, I'm done. So he book, he bucks Tyrion at the last second, and then runs away. And it's like, okay. I mean, if he was worried about Tyrion turning to Cain, then that was a long time ago. So why did he wait to this moment to buck him? Whatever. Whatever. Contrivances. Malekith lands on his dragon. Tyrion murders his dragon. Actually, Marathi helps Tyrion murder his dragon. There's a big purple lightning bolt that kills Seraphon. And then Marathi goes to fight Teclis for the rest of this, where she's going to try and, like, stop the Vortex from being destroyed. So Tyrion and Malekith duel. And in the lore, Assyrian beats Cain. So Malekith has to beat Tyrion because Tyrion's the aspect of Cain. And he doesn't. Tyrion kicks his ass. So, whatever. And Alethanar shows up. And he puts an arrow... Honestly, this is the best part of the book. Alethanar shows up, and he puts an arrow in Tyrion, impaling him through the chest, and killing Tyrion with an arrow. And then he just shoots Malekith anyway. <laughs> He's like, fuck both of you. <laughs> he just shoots Tyrion through the chest. Shoots Malekith. And everything goes dark. So Malchus like, what the fuck? Lathanar <laughs> just fucking killed me. <laughs> and he 
kill Tyrion. Alethanar <laughs> killed both Cain and oh, why am I forgetting these Assyrians avatars in two bow shots? That's hilarious. Oh. Uh, so Teclas and Alariel rush over. Alariel is filled with the winds of Gyrod and she heals Malekith. Malekith gets filled with the wind of shadow, which, okay, I guess. Like, Assyrian loves fire, so I don't know why he's not filled with the lore of fire. But I guess shadow. Even though Teclas, Teclas has been using shadow's magic this whole book and it picks Malekith for shadows. Also, Malekith doesn't use much shadow's magic. He uses dark magic, which is like a perversion of all the winds. But, okay, he's, he's, the, he's the Shadows guy. So that's ass, but okay. So Malekith gets healed by Lariel, and then Alethanar walks up to him and he's like, hey, my arrow is placed right next to your heart. Every time you move, it'll be pure agony. That is my vengeance. Otherwise, I'll help you fight the demons. And Malekith's like, thanks, bro. And Lariel just hands him the arrowhead that she removed from his body and said, don't tell Aleth. And Malekith just kind of chuckles, which was also kind of funny. And Teclas throws in one off. Oh yeah, Marathi died trying to stop me from drip breaking the vortex, but I broke the shit out of it. Cool. And then all the elves go live in Athelorn. The end. That was terrible. <laughs> that was that was that was terrible. I mentioned it so much throughout the video, I don't need to really bother going through all the reasons, but just, like, Malekith is the only one strong enough to lead us was such a joke, because he never, none of his plans worked. Like, his battle plans, he lost. He lost so many battles. He lost the battle for Krace. He lost the battle for the Widowmaker. He lost the final battle. He lost the war leading up to the final battles that made him even consider doing the final battle. He lost everything. He didn't even beat Tyrion. He didn't beat Tyrion in a duel. He didn't beat anybody in a duel. He lost to Tyrion in a duel twice. Alethanar killed Tyrion. Alethanar won the whole thing. Why was Malekith's Assyrians chosen? Why was he the Phoenix King? None of the other elves followed him besides Imric and Teclas the whole time. Like, he didn't win over anybody. He's just a dick. What was the point of all this? What was the point of Assyrians' plan? Why was Lilaeth uh, advocating for this? Like, why did Lilaeth want Teclas to initiate a giant elven civil war that completely crippled them? sunk their island and left them stranded where like a third of the wood elves armies died in this conflict over half of the high elf armies died in this conflict over half the dark elves died in this conflict too also that was one thing i was going to mention way way earlier but Malekith, when he when he reaches all he all of a sudden starts being like the high elves are superior to my dark elves which is insane by the way but he's, he's just like yeah watching them fight they're so much better than my dark elves my dark elves are all full of treachery and and hatred and stuff like the high elves are way better they're superior and it's just that's just such a weird retcon to do where it's like he always thought they were weak and shitty and then all of a sudden he's like no nah, never mind they're they're chill it's my my dark elves that are shitters uh, it's oh god it was terrible it was all terrible Oh, 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 even worse. At the very end, Malkith is such a power-hungry bitch that he tried to grab the Sword of Cain, but it didn't affect him at all. Because apparently, it, it's not clear whether it was Asurian's fire that was keeping it from affecting him, or if Tyrion had, like, drained all of the Cain out of it. But he picks up the Sword of Cain and goes, oh, this is nothing. And he throws it into the, uh, the ocean. But, like... So even at the very end, he still tried to turn to Cain. But Tyrion was the Tyrion was the aspect of Cain, not not Malekith, who even when he finally won, when he had all the power, when he had the wind of of of, of uh is it Urgu? Ulgu? For shadows. When he had the window shadows in him, he had all that, he still wanted the Widowmaker, and it just happened to not have any power, otherwise he would have been as corrupted as Tyrion. Real cool hero, guys. He literally didn't succeed at doing anything. Literally nothing. Alethanar and Teclas did everything. Imric tried to as well. Imric tried his ass off, but he wasn't protagonist Kun, so he couldn't couldn't carry. But Malkit did it. This book sucked. This actually just completely sucked.
if I had to give it an honest rating, not just like a Warhammer fanboy rating, but just a rating on the book's merits itself, it's probably a three. A three out of ten. Comparing it to all the other Warhammer books and with the context of what it does to the lore, it's a two. It's just terrible. I don't know. It's completely terrible. It's garbage. Okay, bye. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.